All right, here we go. Today we have former NBA player Smush Parker. Yes. Welcome to Vlad TV. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Well, you know, your name came up when I interviewed Sebastian Telfair. Yeah. And I think that's why you contacted me. Here we are. Here we are. All right, so it's your first time here. I want to start in the very beginning. So you grew up in Brooklyn. Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, your parents were actual were actually like basketball players themselves. Yeah. They played a little a little bit of basketball, you know. Nothing, nothing nothing past the high school level. Okay. But they were big fans. Yeah. So huge you fans. grew up in this kind of basketball environment. Yes, sir. Okay. And you actually got the name Smush as a baby. Yeah. Um so the story behind that is I don't really tell this story a lot, but uh, my mother gave my dad the nickname Smush. And then when I was born I just became baby Smush. Oh, so he was big Smush and you were yeah. little Smush? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Why Smush? <laughs> I have no idea. No idea. You know, no idea. Okay. All right. So what was Brooklyn like in the you know, the nineties? Uh a lot of graffiti. <laughs> uh, just trains, basketball. Uh, and that was it, you know, for me in the eighties. I was born in eighty one, so uh I I seen it at a at an early age, you know, and I mean who knows? much about life, you know, between like years of one and 10. Mm -hmm. So but what I do remember is uh, just going with my dad to basketball courts to, the, to you know, when he went to, to the gym or the playground and I was following, you know, behind him. Uh, and that's, you know, what I, you know, remember most about New York City in the 80s. Okay. Like, when did you actually pick up a basketball and start to really? I was born with a basketball. Okay, so uh, yeah, at the, age the, zero, the, yeah. you're right there. With Listen, the ball. Uh, like like I like you said, like you asked me, my mom played basketball, my my dad played basketball, so I was always around the game of basketball. Even when I was in a stroller, I was always around the game. Uh, and you know, when I was a baby, and I you know really couldn't dribble basketball, I was you know there's pictures of me on the basketball court, there's pictures of me at home pushing the ball, you know, rolling it around, but even before I could I could control it, so. It's it's always been a part of my uh, my life. So you went to Newtown High School in Queens, and you actually started to excel. Yeah. Okay. Did you feel like you were good enough to go pro at that point, or you weren't sure yet? Uh. So, I, I guess I was naive to think at that point. I I wanted to go pro. I just didn't know how to get 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 to go pro. I didn't know how to go about it. Um. But at that point, you know, when I got to Newtown, I had help. You know, a guy by the name of Rodney Parker, no relation. You know, you know, a New York City guru who helped, you know, thousands of basketball players, you know, uh, get to college and pro, the pro level and overseas. He uh, discovered me playing at West 4th Street, and uh, he kind of guided my my path to get to the NBA from that point. Okay, because you weren't really heavily recruited or anything else Not like that in high school. Not at all. Right, because you went to College of Southern Idaho. Yeah. She's not exactly a top basketball school. No, not at all. <laughs> but then you transferred to uh, Fordham. Yeah. Can I rewind that? So I was being recruited by North Carolina because I did have a connection to mm. uh, North Carolina through Kenny Smith. Okay. Kenny Smith was uh, the uh, the founder of my AAU basketball team, uh, uh -huh. Aim High. You know, uh, coached by, uh, he, he's going to love me saying his name, Kevin Jackson. <laughs> and okay. uh, I played in the backcourt with Tyleek Brown. I don't know if you ever heard of Tyleek Brown, you know, another New York City legend. He uh, went to UConn. Um, I think he even won a, uh, the national championship with uh, Charlie Villanueva and uh, Ben Gordon and those guys. Uh -huh. uh, am, I, am I right? Okay. Um, ben Gordon, also another New York guy. Charlie Villanueva, another New York guy. Um, I do... My connection with Kenny Smith, I was being recruited to go to North Carolina. I just didn't have the grades to uh, go to North Carolina. That's why I ended up in jun junior college. Okay, that's too bad because if you went to North Carolina, it'd be a whole you'd different story. You'd be on story. the fast track. It'd be a whole different Smush Parker story right now. Right. Okay, because what, your grades were just that bad in high school? Again, it was just all about basketball for me. Mm. I didn't. Uh, I didn't understand that books and ball went hand in hand. Well, at the college level, yeah. Yeah. Well, even at the high school level, you have to be, you well, have to say yeah. eligible. Yeah, that's what I'm oh, saying. Yeah, at the to, high school, yeah. college level, yeah. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't know. I just played basketball. I wanted to make it to the NBA. I didn't know what it, what it really took. But, you know, it kind of, it really sunk in uh, my junior year when I wasn't playing. I was like, oh, 
I need to pass my classes to be able to stay to stay eligible to play on my high school team. So it, it clicked. And then, you know, I played that one year, my senior year. Okay. So you go to Fordham. Yes, sir. And your second year there, you you know, you had a solid year. Second team, all A ten, second team, yeah. and ABC all region. And then um you try to get into the NBA draft that second year. Yeah. But you didn't get drafted. No. Was that a big disappointment? Huge. Hmm. Yeah. So, Man. you know, the goal wasn't to actually enter the draft that year. I felt in, in my heart that I just wanted to test the waters. You know, you're, you know, testing the waters mean I put my name in the draft, go to the combines. Then at a certain point, you could take your name out and still be eligible to play, you know, your, the rest of your college uh, years. I just wanted to see what the competition was like, what I needed to work on. And uh, I got to the combines, you know, sure enough, you know, the, the top guys who were being heavily watched by NBA guys and they were playing and I'm competing with these guys and I'm doing well, very well. You know, my name starts to circulate and uh, word gets back to my unsigned agent at the time that, you know, you know, the Smush Parker guy is pretty good. You know, he if he's, you know, stays in a draft and he's on the board at 7 and 13 and even all the way up to, you know, 6, 7, those teams who had the, the, those high picks, I was going to be drafted. So... My dream was to play in the NBA. Mm -hmm. I knew I wasn't a scholar. I knew I, I was using school to get to the NBA. So when I heard those words, I'm like, you know what? I'm staying in a draft. Okay, so you didn't get drafted, but then the Cleveland Cavaliers picked you up? Yeah. So I didn't get drafted, but I do go, I play with the Orlando Magic in NBA Summer League. Hmm. So I play with the Orlando Magic in Orlando. I play with the Orlando Magic in the Boston Summer League. And then I travel out west and I go play, I believe, with the Toronto Raptors in Utah. I played in three summer leagues that summer. And uh, the Cleveland Cavaliers, you know, you know, however my agent worked that out, got wind that, or they, they saw that I was pretty good, so they called me in and, and invited me to vet camp. They invited me to vet camp. I played against, you know, the vets and working out and competing, and I earned a spot on the Cleveland Cavaliers that season. Okay, so did you actually play for the Cavs that season? I did. Aha. Started for the Cavs that you season. You started for the Cavs? Yes, as a rookie, as an unsigned free agent. Okay, and who was on the Cavs that year? Okay, you want me? Okay. Right, here we so, go. so uh, Carlos Boozer? Yeah, Darius Miles, Ricky Davis, yep. uh, Tyrone Hill, Bimbo Coles, Milt Palacio, uh, Dewan Wagner was the number uh, three pick. I said that already. Mm -hmm. Carlos Boozer was their second. Who else? Uh, Jermaine Jones, you know, it was a it was a young cast, young cast of guys, youngest in the NBA, youngest team in the NBA, put it that way. Okay, and because LeBron joins the next year, yes, sir. So this is before the LeBron yeah, era. Yeah, yes, pre LeBron, pre LeBron. Uh, how did they do that year? Who the Cavs when you were on there? Uh, I plead the fifth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, uh, a LeBronless Cavs don't always don't always Listen, do their thing. You know, there's, I mean, <laughs> I mean, there was word going around that you know Cleveland was you know was trying to tank that season to get the first pick oh, to get for the first LeBron. Pick next season. Yeah, uh, whatever. We were we were a young team, and I just I know the guys on the team that I was playing with. We were competing every night to win basketball game. Okay, was it frustrating? finally joined the NBA, but you're not on a good team? No. I wasn't even thinking about being on a good team or on a bad team. I was more fo or I was I was more focused on actually trying to establish myself in the NBA. Right. I actually looked it up. They were 29 and 53. Damn. I said I plead the fifth, man. Yeah. So they <laughs> lost twice as many games as yeah. they won. Yeah. Yeah. Well, at least you're playing for the NBA. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So... After that, you ended up joining the Greek League. Yeah, so uh, they they wiped house. They cleaned they cleaned everybody out from Cleveland. You know, they only kept a handful handful of guys because right, LeBron's coming. Yeah, they got to build a they, team around they, him. They they changed the arena name. They changed the seats. They they <laughs> mopped the floors. They did everything. They swept. They they did everything. They changed everything about the uh, that arena for LeBron. 
Um, I ended up at the vet camp in Atlanta. Um, then get picked up in Atlanta, played maybe, I want to say, four games in the NBDL at the time, also known as the G League. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to go overseas. I'm going to take my I'm gonna take my talents to Greece. Mm-hmm. I went out to Greece, won a, won a championship, won the Greek Cup in Greece, and then I came back the following year and tried my hand at the NBA again. Okay, so you came back to the U.S. Yes, sir. And then you joined the Pistons? Yes. Yeah, uh, coached by Larry Brown. Mm-hmm. Uh, good guy. Uh, tough tough coach for me to play for. Um, but the, the 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 cast, the crew on that team, man, Chauncey Billups, Rep Hamilton, Tayshawn Prince, Ben Wallace, Rasheed Wallace, Darwin Ham, Lindsey Hunter, Derek Coleman. Uh, man, it, it was a team full of vets. Savvy vets that uh, had a lot of a wealth of information, and they shared it, and they were good, a good, a good, a good group of guys, good core group of guys. Right, I mean the bad boys. Yeah, <laughs> and it was tough. It was tough to get playing time. Tough to get playing time. I mean, yeah, because you had a monster team on your yeah. hands. Yeah, uh, and then the malice in the palace. And then the happens. malice in the palace. And you were right there. I was okay. Front, front and center. Did you know this was about to happen? Uh, I mean, you know, could you feel we were, it in the air? What, what was about to pop off? We were just talking about this last <laughs> night. Uh, am I allowed to talk about this? I man? did. I did. Am I allowed to talk about it? Go ahead. I think he said it. Yeah, it's am I allowed? Can I talk about this? I, just, I think it's all right. the, the... So, so <laughs> we all know we're on our test. Yep, I know, Ron. We know, you know, the the the, the history behind, you know, just how he played. Very physical, very passionate, very aggressive. Mm-hmm. He's a strong dude. I remember playing against him uh, when I was in high school. He played for Riverside, and he he was that size in the NBA in high school. <laughs> he like he developed super fast, and uh, we got smacked by about ninety that year uh, playing against him in uh, Riverside. But you lost by ninety. Yeah, no, it was it was ugly. <laughs> it was that's ugly. crazy. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, that was so, a long, a long bus ride home after that. Huh? So I say that to say, you know, can I ass whoopings? Can I say ass? Yeah, ass whooping, ha- ass whoopings happen to everybody. You know, yeah. it's about how you come back from those ass whoopings that you know make that develop you as a player. So, uh, fast forward back to uh, you know Indiana Pacers. We all know. I don't know what happened between Ben Wallace and uh, Ron Artest previously. I just know that <laughs> um, Ben Wallace uh, came into the locker room before the game and was like, you know what? I'm not dealing with his shit tonight. Oh, talking about Ron. Yeah. Okay. I'm not dealing with his shit tonight. I'm not having it. And, and I don't know what transpired throughout the rest of the, the whole game. I just know that the incident happened and boom, it lit a, it lit a flame that was already there and it, and it blew up. Quickly, yeah. I mean, I remember when uh, when Ron basically got on that table, yeah, and then the fans started throwing drinks at him, yeah. Ron just snapped, mm-hmm. and then he ran into the stands, yeah, and then everyone else joined in, mm-hmm. and a, a lot of a lot of fans got their ass kicked that day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, the fans, yeah. not the yeah. players, the fans, <laughs> the fans. <laughs> no, listen, I had a front row seat. I was there. I mean, you can watch the video. I was there. the safest place in that arena. Out no outside of just being on the outside, out if he was on the court was at half court, you know because there was so much going on, so much going on. I mean, did you feel like this is my team? I need to join in or no? No, no. I had no uh, <laughs> I had no job security. <laughs> <laughs> You're the man the totem pole. My my, my my contract wasn't guaranteed. I wasn't trying to get fined, suspended. Could have been no nonsense. I was uh, honestly, I was just thinking. Listen, I just got in the game. I am trying to hoop. Yo, guys, just settle this some some other time. Let's just play basketball. Well, That's, it was over. I mean, there was no yeah. chance of playing basketball yeah. once. Yeah. yeah, I mean, because this is the most violent basketball incident of all time in during NBA game, history. In NBA oh, history, well, is it the most violent? I've seen some of the them old black and white. Clips okay, of... in the color era. Okay, all right. <laughs> in the color TV era. I've seen era. some bros back then that was that that will rival uh, okay. the Malice in the Palace. 
I mean, once the dust settled, okay. how did your teammates feel about you not joining in? Was there? Any oh sort yeah, of... no, that it was it was so it was so chaotic that no one knew who didn't join in. It was just every man for themselves at that point. I mean, I remember uh, I went to uh, the premiere of uh, Ron Artest documentary. Okay, yeah. And we were we were watching it. I remember there was this one time I think he was talking to Stephen Jackson. He was like, "Yo, Stephen, think we're in trouble?" He's like, "In trouble? We're gonna get arrested!" Like, <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about in trouble? Are you kidding me right now? Like, we're about to get kicked out of the league. Like, you talking yeah. about we gonna get in trouble? Like, yeah, we gonna get in trouble. Yeah. Uh, right, because a lot of people got suspended over that. Yeah. Extended periods of time. Yes. I, yeah. I remember this. It yeah. was, it was a mess. It was a mess. Okay, did you talk to Ron after this? Did uh, you guys have a relationship at all? No, not not to that extent where we you know we talk about the malice in the palace. You know, I've seen him, you know, in passing the New York City uh, basketball tournaments here and there, but we don't talk about the negative stuff. We talk about the positive stuff, you know. Okay. Uh, the, the years, the, the league, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, listen, I, I remember... I met Ron. I mean, I interviewed him after he retired, but I met him while he was still playing. And I remember his shoulders were like the widest shoulders I've ever seen on a human. Mm -hmm. Like literally. Mm -hmm. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, like I, I've just yeah. never seen a human built like that before. So I can just imagine getting into a fist fight with this dude. Like, Listen, like as a fan, like, like it's just, it sounds insane. I wouldn't it, run up on him. No, like, not at all. But people not. were doing it. Ronald Chess is super strong. And, yeah. and uh, to give you, I have a history with his family. I play with, I played with his younger brother on the same team, mm. Daniel Altes, and he's stronger than Ron Altes. Okay, man, it, it, that that whole family is like just just naturally strong and gifted. Okay, so then you went from the the Pistons to the Suns. Yeah, was that the same season? Or? Yeah, same season. Okay, so you just got traded mid season. No, I didn't get traded. I got uh, released before the trade deadline. Uh, before the before the um, guaranteed contract, you know. For the rest of the year, I guess what's that, January fifteenth? That's uh -huh. right. They released me. I went down to the uh G League. Uh I think it was still called the MBDL at the time. And uh, you know, played a few games there, played well. I have the uh MBDLs, you know, two first triple doubles. And I uh, got two I got called up to the Phoenix Suns twice that that year. Okay. And what was it like playing for the Phoenix Suns as opposed to Detroit? Uh it was, it was different. Um, everybody in Phoenix was friendlier, hmm. even down to the staff. It was just more. It was more of a light, a light kind of atmosphere. Uh, people were just nice and friendly and warming and uh, carefree. But I mean, those you know, the, the Steve Nash and. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, uh, who else was there? Uh, not, uh, Raja Bell and Boris Diaw and, uh, who else was, uh, Sean Marion and those guys. Those were, you know, you know, good guys to play for. Really nice guys. Amari Stoudemire. Amari Stoudemire. Yeah. Has the greatest hands in the NBA, in NBA history. Yep. That guy caught everything. <laughs> <laughs> he caught everything. Hey, you know, for such... For such a strong guy, he had great touch. Mm. He had a great touch around the basket. You know, he had a good 10 to 15 foot jumper. But when he got around that rim, he dunked everything. Mm. You know, so I, I was I was enamored by, you know, just how strong, how strong he was, but also how, uh, lack of a better term, gentle he was with and graceful with the uh, game of basketball. 